Hello, sports fans out there, and hopefully Stratomatic fans, too. Uh, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And I'm here with part three in my series of setting up your own league, setting up your own CM in a league, etc. And today we are going to use my team from my competitive league because... Uh, this file is in the cloud and uh, I can always go get the new file and so if I mess up the team it doesn't matter um, so uh, and by the way uh, I do want to mention that if you have a team in the cloud um, the uh, the commissioner can uh, set a code number and a league number and then you can go up to um, cloud and um, upload you can upload a league to the cloud you can manage your team in the cloud you can pull down your computer man pull your computer manager there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do and when you make the CM and you want the commissioner to be able to get it from the cloud you can push the computer manager to the cloud um, and you can claim your team. I've already done that. You have to claim your team to be able to manage it. But that's just a quick overview of that. And I don't run a league, so I don't know about setting a league up in the cloud. All I know is that I can push my manager to the league for the commissioner after I've set it up and I can retrieve the league from the, the updated league from the cloud. So that's why I don't mind messing up the, my team. Uh, for this demonstration so the first thing I'm going to go over today now I want to recap something that has to do with the pitching first because I did do the pitching last time I did you know setting up your you know setting up the the bullpen and your pitcher today matchups and all of that stuff but I also want to today go over uh, something that I omitted from the last time and that is bullpen logic so if you go to your team and this is my team is Providence and you go to um, uh, update computer manager and now you can see it brings up my um, my pitching my pitching page first pitchers so setting up a pitcher logic line is something that's more uh, more specific to Hal and he's more likely to follow it than just you see right here I've got John Gant as my closer now whether Hal really follows that or not is uh, anyone's guess and I have Gantt set up to avoid using during a blowout, avoid before the 6th, before the 7th, before the 8th, and a max of 1 to 2 innings per uh, appearance. So, in theory, you know, the computer will take that and use it, or use it as a suggestion, or whatever. But, if you go in and you say Super Hal, now you can set up pitcher logic lines and logic line a is going to be the closer line so we will set up a closer line in um, pitcher logic then you come over here you click on the first line which is going to be line a and uh, score this um, asks you what uh, score do you want this line to kick in at and I believe you start with one to three it may be it's either one to three or three to one but um i mean you can make it anything you can make it i'm up by three i'm up by two whatever but we'll say i'm up by anywhere from three to one run now outs it's asking what outs at what out during the game do you want this to start and um i think it's 25 25 26 20, yeah so you want this to start at out 25 if this is the ninth if you just want the closer to kick in in the night in the ninth inning you want it to start on out 25 if you want it to start during the eighth then you make it out you know anywhere from 21 to 24 or whatever so 
but we'll say outs 25 to 27 or 25, 26, 27. Down here, you've got check boxes. You want the closer to come in against all of these guys. This is a, a regular lefty, a, le a regular righty, a switch hitter, a reverse lefty, and a reverse righty. And you would say yes. And here you can see um, there's a force box. If I click this box, Hal will always do this. Now what you do is you, you've got this set up to bring the closer in on line A. Line A is set up as the closer line and you've got it all set up, but now you have to go over here and put these pictures in the order that you want them to come in. Now my closer is actually John Gant, so he would be at the top of the line. And then I guess my um, next designated closer would be Lucas Sims. So we have Lucas Sims as second. I suppose the next guy would maybe be Nick Nelson. I'm just throwing this out here. So he will go and grab John Gant first. If John Gant hasn't already appeared in the game, which he shouldn't have, he will go grab Gant first. And then when Gant gets tired or ineffective, he'll go to Sims. He'll go to Nelson. So that's that's the closer line and you do the same thing you can do the same thing with any of the other lines you can set them all up to be you know i want this guy to come in at this number of outs with the score as this so let me just make sure that was three to one no all right so yeah all right so it is it's one to three you're saying that you want um you want the closer line to come in when you are up by the score of one to up to three or you can make it one to up to two doesn't matter um, but remember this force box because if you click that box he's always going to do that if you don't click it then it's again it's a suggestion to the computer hey i would like this to happen you know so i just wanted to show you guys that um and let you know about that because um, it was pitcher related and I know I talked extensively about the pitching last time but now let's talk about the lineups um, team go to the lineup now you can see here is my lineup but one thing I want to point out about your lineups is see I have Wendell here at second base now um, if you go down to Super Hal and you go to second base, you can see Joey Wendell is up there as my, he's listed on my second baseman. And on the depth chart, you've got uh, Ruffnett Odor. Um, he's in the lineup. Is he in the lineup? Let me go, let me go look at that. He shouldn't be in the lineup. No, he's, but he's in the minors. He's not on, he's not on my bench, but anyway. You go look at, let's go look at Super Hale again. We'll look at second base. You got Wendell up there. So <clears throat> I guess the next guy in line maybe would be Walters, although he's my backup catcher. So let's say it would be a Danny Hecaveria. So you would move Hecaveria up there and you would move Walters up after him because they're the only two guys anyway that are active on your roster. So what this means is when if, if Wendell gets injured or removed from the game for any reason, this will tell Hal, I want the next second baseman to be a Danny Hecaveria. Now, of course, with a limited bench, you're going to run into a problem. You can see right here, I've got Anderson at short. He has Wendell listed as the um, next guy to come in at shortstop, but Wendell's really the second baseman. So Hecaveria actually would become the next choice for shortstop. And so you do that and then you hit okay, you do that for every position. And now you have all of the positions set up so that you can go, so that Hal will grab the guy that you want. Because how many times have we seen somebody gets injured and then Hal brings in a guy that you are like, whoa, why did he bring this guy in? So that is, um, so that's a little, a little, uh, a tutorial there about that. I mean, as far as setting up your regular lineups, I'm sure everybody 
is quite is briefed on how to do that. Um, now, also, I had the question, how do you change um, font? And the way that I do that, because you notice that my font is a little different at certain places. So what you do is you go to options, you go all the way down to miscellaneous, and then you've got font right here. This will reset the font, and then you can click on any of these various things, and it will uh, and it will change the font for you, which I did do. So now the last thing I want to talk about is altering players. And sometimes you want to do that. And I did do that with my Imagine season because there were guys that needed some more playing time. And Stratomatic just, in the Imagine season, Stratomatic just, for most guys, they just kind of straight out um, estimated how much they would play based on how much they did play. So, you know, in other words, if somebody only played 60% of the 60 game schedule, then in the Imagine season for a lot of guys, they only play 60% of the 162 game schedule. And in some cases, I didn't agree with that because I was like, you know, this guy, I mean, sure, he was injured, but he had an injury where he was just coming back or he would have come back soon. And in a 162 game schedule, in theory, he would have played the rest of the season. So um, so I've altered stats a little bit for guys to adjust for things like that in my imagined season. So now, like, um, let's take a guy like uh, Alex Gordon. And I'm just going to show you how to, in general, change the stats. You go, you click on the player, and then you say, you go up to player, and you say update player. And now you can see Alex Gordon hit 209 at bats, 489. So, uh, you know, let's say that we wanted to say he really played half the time. Um, so 489 would be 240, let's say 244, 244 at bats. And um, let's, so now you have to, you would, um, you would, divide everything by two so doubles would go down to six home runs would go down to six uh this would go down to 16 16 rbis uh 27 or so walks um 50 56 maybe uh, strikeouts and so now you've got and then you hit okay and now you've got Gordon with half the stats that he would have had. Now you can also go in and alter his card. So you can go player, update player. Uh, you can go to fielding ratings and we can make him a left field three. And you can go to, um, let's see here, player, update player. You can go and you can take singles away from him. So let's take make this single into a line out to first base. And you can do stuff like that. And you can also um, make your own player. You can go up here and you can go to player, create, create um, or enter, what I do is I go enter player card because I don't really know what the difference between create a fringe player and enter a player card is. So then it says, which type do you want to create? You say batter. And then of course you fill in the name, you fill in all of the, you know, everything. You go to the next page, you do the, uh, okay. So anyway, it, it wants me to fill in all this stuff before I go to the next page. But anyway, you get the idea. So you can even make your own players. So I just wanted to uh, point that out. And with that, that is everything in my discussion today. Um, and if there is anything that you guys want me to cover, 
let me know. I can do another video and we can talk about it. And it's a good thing that this uh, league is in the cloud so I can go grab the real league and delete this one. And by the way, I can just, all I have to do, click on that league and then you're on the league and then you say league. Um, and then delete. And then it says, um, I, I'm not going to back it up because the commissioner backs it up in the cloud. And then you go through all of that and then the league is gone. And then I can go and grab it from the cloud, which I'm not going to do right this second because I've got the codes written down somewhere else and all that stuff. So I can go get the league from the cloud and then, uh, you know, adjust my CM. But anyway, that is going to be it for this discussion on uh, setting up your CMs, setting up your leagues. Again, if I missed anything, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Um, if you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe. It, uh, it doesn't hurt. And, uh, you know, you don't have to pay anything, but it helps me immensely. But for right now, that's it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.